Hello there, YouTube. This is Zoo Tycooner Steve back here. We're at episode 12 of the Let's Play in our current zoo. Just hanging out right now at our new white-tailed deer exhibit. Um, I said I wanted this exhibit to be a little more realistic, uh, so I built up a little more foliage to hide the deers, and it's apparently doing a pretty good job, since I can't see most of them. Except that doe that's kind of hanging out in the hay inside our shelter, so I guess that's okay. And usually at this point, I would turn to the areas we haven't developed, but uh, I think we need to start looking backwards a little bit. Because what I want to do, at least for the first half of our uh, episode today, is go back through the beginnings of this little forest part of the zoo and sort of spruce them up and bring them up to date. Um, so, uh, after that, I am going to go into... Well, I'm going to do another exhibit today. I'm going to do some wolves. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to put it to the left of the path here or past... There's a lot of open area here. Well, I'll figure that out. Um, but if you remember, back when we first started this and I put in that raccoon exhibit, I was just kind of uh, putting in an area for some small mammals, uh, just so I could kind of do those little exhibits, which I do like so much. But um, I didn't really have a clear idea of what I wanted to do. I certainly didn't think I was going to be making the one big forest area. So what I want to do now is go ahead and um, spruce up that beginning area and sort of get it all looking the same and uh, so it all matches up. Beginning by finishing off this walkway, I kind of started it the last episode and got distracted. So first things first, I need to finish making this the safari elevated path so I can have that wood pattern like we discussed last time. Okay, I just slide this around into here. And like so. Yes, okay. And so, um, that's, that's kind of our plan today. We're going to go through, um, we're going to change a lot of the foliage and things that we put around the skunks, foxes, and raccoons to begin with, and sort of make it line up with what we did with the past two exhibits with the black bears and our white-tailed deer. And then, uh, of course, we'll also continue that pattern into our new wolf exhibit that we'll be doing in the second half of today's Let's Play. So let's just go ahead and get this pathway looking all nice. Um, doo -doo -doo. Right here, I think that's what we were using last time. Yeah, it matches up fine. Yeah, okay. And so we got that done, so let's turn our attention to the foliage. And uh, I think I'll start by just getting rid of these elder trees, which I actually like those elder trees a lot, but. Um, they no longer fit, so it's time to go. And the same will be true with these birch trees here. And I think I've got some more elders over here, so let's just get that cleared all out. And we'll just do our usual thing here. Um, so uh, ferns, plants I can't remember, and the two different kinds of pine trees. That's what's going to be our exhibit throughout. I might even end up uh, deleting the fence along the pathways here and just kind of um, keep the foliage right to the edge of the path so that kind of makes a natural border instead of having to put up an actual fence on that side there. Not entirely positive but I'm thinking about it. Um, okay let's just fill in this area here. I'm probably not going to change uh, the type of grass I have in the actual exhibits uh, for the foxes and the skunks. Um, just because I really like how those exhibits turned out. So they'll stick out a little bit, but I'm okay with that. Uh, I think it'll be just fine. Uh huh. Plant what has no name. Go in the middle area here. And, well, I can't put it right there because if I put it right there, I'll be blocking in the uh, gated entrance. So we'll just use it to kind of fill out this area right here. Alright, very cool. And like so. And then I'll also fill in the sides around the path here. Um, there we go. I'm actually really, really happy that this. Um, that you guys in the comments kind of suggested over and over again to uh, once I put in the raccoons that I should do a whole sort of forest area which is um, 
like I said, it wasn't my original plan. I really didn't have a theme for this area. But uh, I like it a lot for two reasons. Um, one, I liking how it's really coming. I really like the way it's starting to look, uh, particularly once we added in those black bears. I think it's uh, I think it's going to be a really cool place to have, and um, I think it's going to fit well with the fact that we are, already did that area of the zoo that was the farmland. So uh, the zoos will be kind of split up into little areas, I guess, is how we'll just design the rest of it, where we'll have sort of unique habitats for all of them. And um, one of the reasons I did the farmland was because I kind of looked through YouTube beforehand, and I didn't really see anyone that had, like, a full farm area a tutorial for a Zoo Tycoon 2. Um, I, there were a couple people that have barns that actually kind of look probably better than mine, truthfully, but... Uh, there was no real full how do you do it, and um, I kind of think of this Let's Play as uh, both a place where I can experiment, get some feedback, but also it can serve as a tutorial, because I know that's what I use YouTube a lot for when it comes to Zoo Tycoon 2, is looking for tutorials and ideas and how to do things that I don't know, and so that's why I wanted to do the farmland, and that is... Um, Another reason why I'm really happy with this forest area, because uh, there are other people that have done, like, uh, forest zoos, where the full zoo is just the forest biome, or uh, whatever the technical term for this biome is. I know it's not just forest, it's like alpine forest or boreal forest or something like that. Um, but I think this one is unique enough looking that um, it's got some merit in and of itself, and hopefully it's giving you some ideas when you watch it. And uh, what I'm doing right now is, uh, again, reading the comments for last time. Uh, it was mentioned at least once, if not a few times, that this area here looked a little cramped. I tend to agree with it. Um, I think the reason I left it so small was because, uh, even though I wanted to put in a place where you can uh, buy merchandise and food and have a place to sit down for this part of the zoo, I was trying to make it so that the forest area didn't get too large, but... Um, since I am going to put in a wolf display today, and wolves do require kind of a large area, otherwise they get very finicky about their space, um, I just decided, who am I trying to fool? Uh, they're right, the commenters were right that uh, this area does not look the best place, so I'm just going to widen out the area with these items, take it a little further away from the path to give people or guests more room when they pass through here. Also probably going to look a little bit better. So, uh... There we go, and that's kind of the end result. We're going to take that and fill in the area here with foliage. Like so. Eh, I don't mind if those kind of leak onto the roof there. It's going to be just fine. Uh, okay. And yeah, we'll just go ahead and background the area like we've been doing the rest. Maybe put a couple of these red pines towards the front here in this gap, just so it looks a little more full. Uh, a little more foresty, because uh, obviously in a forest, uh, naturally occurring forest, there's not going to be, uh, trees aren't going to be, like, set down in nice, neat, even rows. You just kind of fall where they may. So that's what we're going to want to emulate there. And now we'll drop in our ferns. Um, Why I'm doing this, I've mentioned already a few times this episode um, about the comments, how those suggested the forest area or expanding the little snack bathroom area here. Um, and I just want to take the time to say I really do appreciate the comments that you leave on the videos. I know I don't always respond to them all, but I assure you I do read them all. Because, uh, well, here I'm kind of stuck where I am. Because, well, if you look at our snack area, I always think that looks way... I already think that looks way better than it does. So I really do appreciate it when you leave those comments. Because uh, it gives me great ideas. Like, uh, you know, I would not have done just a forest area here uh, if you hadn't prompted me to. Uh, by commenting on the videos. So I want to thank you for that. That's kind of one of the joys of doing a Let's Play in this model, where I can get some feedback and it prompts me to go into areas I would not necessarily go. And it forces me to be uh, more creative and ultimately become a better zoo tycooner. So I'm hoping that if you are looking at these as tutorials, that it's helping to make you better. And I thank you for helping to make me better, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And, up. Oh, that's going to dip into the water a little bit, so I'll probably thin out the river in this section just slightly. Uh, because I do want those uh, that log fence to kind of work as a background border for the 
forest land. I guess it's land is the word I'll keep using. Copy this. And I guess right to there. That, that's going to be fine because it'll just dissolve into a tree in that food cart. And then we'll just plant a few more of these guys to kind of fill that in. Because I really don't want guests to be able to see through the area like the plant foliage is too thin or anything. I want it to look like it's really just kind of dissolving into a thick, thick forest. Even though it's only a few feet deep in actuality. You know, make it kind of look like an actual zoo theme park would. Where you got that facade everywhere. Alright, and let's go ahead and take a look at it now. Unpause and switch to guest mode. And yeah, I'm liking that a lot more. It's It doesn't crowd up the path. You can see the guests are flooding to it, so clearly it was needed in this area. And let me just drop in a few more of these ferns to kind of make sure it looks like the ground's covered completely. And, hmm. I definitely want these ferns here. I'm now thinking about that statue we put in of the white-tailed deer. I do like they have the statue there since you have to get on that pathway to get to the white-tailed deers. Um, but I'm not sure I like the statue exactly there. I'm kind of thinking about it in my head. Um, let me just finish filling this in while I'm thinking about it. I probably am going to move it here. Um, particularly since we moved the bathroom and snack stands and everything off the pathway. We kind of left a little open space here. Let's see if I can't move the... Well, let's fill in these ferns here because I just saw that and that's annoying me. Like there, maybe? Yeah, okay, yeah, one there. Hmm. Alright, let's, let's, uh, I can't, uh, it's one of the ones that doesn't let me move. Okay, I'll make a copy real quick. Um, line it up more or less in the middle here using this, uh, using our guidelines. Uh, right about there, I guess, is good. And we can make it stand out a little bit more by deleting the pathway underneath it. No, I don't want to delete it. There we go. Mm -hmm. And then let's put a little fence around it. Which is something I like to do uh, with my statues or trees that I put in the middle of the path or anything, just so guests don't like. I'm not sure if I like that though. Usually I'm all for putting a little border around it, but um, let's see, how does it look from here? See, there's no like plaque or anything on that statue, so. I think the actual intent of that statue is that you'll put it inside a display just to make sure you can always see the white-tailed deer. Um, I'm going to leave it as a statue. Let's get rid of that second redundant one now. But I'm going to think I'm going to change the fence around it. Um, whoops. It's going to be in the actual fences or in the fence tab. Just a pro tip for you there. Uh, let's see, what's going to look good around it? Um, supporting wall is probably too high. Yeah, because it's the same height there. She probably couldn't see the bottom of it. Um, that would work more with a uh, fountain, but with a statue, it's kind of sketchy. Um, extra low? I still think that might be a little off. Huh. Uh, let me just kind of scroll here for a second. Maybe try the cable fence here. Or the wire fence, I guess. Technically is his name. No, low cable fence. I was right. That's better. It's certainly low enough. Um, you know what? Let's just go ahead and leave it without a fence. Because I don't think I'm going to find one that makes me perfectly happy. Uh... Yeah, it would be better if it had a plaque on it or something or like that. But, uh, no, I'm actually okay with that. I think I'm actually just fine with that. Uh -huh. And I'm sorry about that. I just paused because I kept getting... Um, kept getting comments that my foxes were hungry there. 
and I don't know where my zookeeper disappeared to. I didn't want to waste time hunting it, so I just make another zookeeper there. But anyway, I promised you some wolves today, and uh, wolves I'm going to give. And I think I'm going to put them north of the white-tailed deer exhibit. So what I'm going to do is wrap our little forest walkway path so it like uh, follows the outline of our white-tailed deer exhibit. And then since if you're looking back at the deer, all you're really going to see are all those trees and bushes we put in last time. I'll put the wolves on the other side. That way it kind of looks like it's coordinated together. Um, let me change that last part because i got a couple of these trees outside of the exhibit that I don't want to run into them. So there, like that. And I'll just fatten up one area here that will turn into sort of the viewing area for the wolves. And I think I'm going to try to take it down the same path aesthetically as we did with the white-tailed deer where um, it's going to be a lot more forested than usual. Again, wolves, uh, at least in all the displays of zoos I've actually seen them in, they tend not to have great viewing for humans. Um, you can catch them from time to time, but they tend to be kind of skittish around people. So, I want to go ahead and make sure that um, that's the impression that we're giving to keep a more realistic looking zoo. I don't like this corner here. Let me round this off. Okay. And uh, I'll probably end up putting some more trees in the gap between the pathway and the deer there, but uh, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so now to find our wolves, and no, I have no clue where the wolves are. So this will be one of those long, long, long scrolling episodes where I'm just going forever trying to find it. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, well, um... No, that's the coyote. I recognize that. That's a really good animal from Hispa Designs. Uh, maybe if we end up putting it in a desert area, I'll do the coyote. But, um, yeah, while I'm scrolling through, that's a good thing to see. Um, I am going to do the wolves. Uh, no, that's a fox. I'm going to do the wolves here, and I'll probably do one or two more smaller exhibits um, to finish off the forest area for next episode. Lucky number 13 next. Um, but if you have an idea of what kind of area you want to do next, please don't hesitate to start commenting now. You can let me know, uh, is there a certain biome you want to see, a certain, uh, like, uh, certain geographic location? Uh, you know, let me know. I'm pretty flexible. Uh, like I said, I wasn't really intending on doing that when I started the zoo. When I started the zoo, I figured it would just kind of be like a city zoo where I had a hodgepodge of whatever was going on, but, um... Then the idea came to me to do the uh, farmland. I still can't find this wolf. I wasn't joking, I guess. The idea came to me to do the farmland, and then um, you insisted, despite my protest, on uh, doing the forest area. So you wrote me into that against my free will. Just, you know, put a gun to my head. So I guess we might as well keep up putting sections in. Where is the wolf? That's the African dog. Yeah. There it is. Okay. The gray wolf. Found it. Right there. That's the one I wanted. It's, I think this one's actually Zoo Tycoon content, so that'll be kind of interesting. We haven't done one of those in a while. Uh, at least not since we left the farm. Was there been anything in the farm? That's... No, I guess it's before that. I guess the last Zoo Tycoon content we did was our Nile Crocodiles way back in Episode 3. So uh, let's go ahead here and get to work on our Eastern Timberwolves. And, well, I'm meant to do <laughs> the fence that we started using with our white-tailed deer, and I grabbed the one that has, like, the sliding in and out. So that was a mistake. Let's go ahead and switch that over. And, like I said, this is going to be a fairly big exhibit, because um, I want to put a wide area for them to run around in. I also want to put in, like, a uh, caged area animal house, just to make it a little more realistic. So, yeah, that's pretty big. I don't want to make it too big because we are almost uh, we're almost getting to the north end of the zoo. If I scroll up, I guess we got some room. But, uh, let me go ahead and find. I'm looking for the like white bricks, or uh, not the white bricks. Let's use the stones. Where are those? Um, they're usually towards the front or towards the top in this case, I think. No? Um... 
Must not be something that's recommended for the Timberwolves, um, but I'm pretty sure they'll, well, they'll, they'll work. Because uh, the ones that come from Zeta Designs, like the ones I'm intending on using here, if I can ever find them, seem to work with every animal, even if you uh, are downloading from random sites. They're pretty well keyed up, so I'm not worried about that. I am worried that, like the wolf, I will never ever find it. Aha! Here they are. So yeah, I told you, right where I said they were the whole time, and you doubted me so much. And I'll do a level 4 height. Yeah, that's fine. Because it's probably going to be a flat roof. I don't think I'm going to uh, make an angled roof here. Yeah, we'll do it like this. So I want it a little bit off of where I started the path there. Something like that. And how deep do we want it? I want it deep enough for, uh, 40? Yeah, they've already got a pretty big display. Four deep should be enough. And let me scroll around. Yeah, you can see we are almost at the north wall here, so, uh, gotta leave at least enough room so people can walk in there and I can put, uh, display or something down to make that path more interesting. And I'm kind of hesitating here because I haven't really done these before. Um, I've seen a lot of other people do them, uh, so I guess now I should recommend if um, if you want a more realistic looking uh, sort of animal trainer or animal zookeeper house thing, uh, check out Zoomaster Ben's channel. He does these really good, probably better than I'm going to end up here because I am kind of winging it. Um, Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm 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 okay with that. So now let's go ahead and put down a pathway inside that area for our zoo keepers. And then we'll section them off by putting in a Putting in an iron bar fence, yeah, that's what we'll do. So let me. Yeah, let me shorten this up. I decided I did not like that being too wide, it was going to be too fat for what I'm trying to do here. So let's go ahead and make that a one wide, put in the stone wall. The uh, wolves are pretty small, they should be able to pass through a one by one square without any problem. So. I'm thinking that's going to be just fine, and let's do the same thing. Well, here, before I forget, let's make an entrance. And let's go ahead and open up our fences and find a good, like, iron bar fence to put in there. I think it looks somewhat realistic. That's chain link. Which I guess would work okay. Yeah, it would look okay, but I think if I go with the uh, Snow Leo's equipment, it's going to be a better overall effect. So let's go ahead and find the one that's at the 4 height. Nope, that's a 5. There's a 4 right there. and use those. I think that's going to be better. And then I also want the four height with the sliding entrance. Go right here. Go right there. And we'll just go ahead and slide it all the way down right now so the wolves can get in. But, uh, and that's one of the things where it's completely aesthetic. You don't really need to have the uh, sliding cages. You don't have to put any type of fence there at all. 
But I think it just looks more realistic if there's a little something there that makes it look like you're trying to control the wolves in a real life scenario. Fatten this up and go ahead and begin working on the outside area of our exhibit by painting in the dirt like so. Well, it really is a large exhibit. Uh, maybe I made it too big, but um, that's okay. That's okay. And we'll go ahead and extend it and make it so that these little runs here are part of the iron bars as well. And I actually put too small a uh, door fence down there. I put only a three high, so I need to change those over. And get rid of this and extend that fence. So where is the four high door fence? I think that's it. Nope, that was five, two. Well, if that's a five and a two, here's a three. Okay. And we'll just drag these down so the wolves can actually get through. And go ahead and do the same thing over here. And let's go ahead and subdivide this. So that way, uh, the theory would be that if you had like a wolf that was especially aggressive or maybe the one that was in heat that you didn't want to breed, you could lock away that particular wolf in a separate little cage of their own. Uh, which is always a good idea when you're dealing with aggressive animals that will kill other members of their pack. Um, for wolves, I guess what you would use it a lot is if you had some baby male wolves and they became sexually mature and presented a threat to the alpha wolf, that could make a lot of fighting. So until you found a good place to either put your alpha wolf or your new young adult wolves, you would want to keep them separate. So that's why zoos do it in real life, and that's why we're going to do it here. Oh, I can't put a uh, river down all the way because of the elevated pathways making the hitbox bad. Oh, well. That's still going to be a good effect, because you're not going to be able to see that from the elevator pathway, so that'll be fine. Let me go ahead and rock this place up. I think we're going to let this one spill over on the path a little bit. I think that makes a good effect. Now, shelters. Uh, obviously, we have sort of a faux shelter already in there with our caged area. But I do want the animals to genuinely be happy in their display. Um, so I think I might cheat and use one of these sleeping platforms instead of like a full cave shelter. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to work just fine. Um, yeah, I think that like that one, even though it's clearly made to look a little more artificial and that there are logs that are specifically stacked, I think I like the look of that one better. And let's go ahead and be kind of generous with our uh, animal enrichment items, beginning with this little waterfall effect here. And post a rope with ice. I really like these things. I put one in our uh, fox exhibit too. I just think they look neat. Um, You know what, I was thinking for a second that maybe I would give the wolves the uh, their kind of own little biome, but uh, on further reflection real quick, I think it's better if we keep this area looking all standardized. So we're going to go with the ferns, nameless plants, and the two different types of pine trees, uh, just like we were doing earlier with the uh, older parts of the exhibit we were trying to spruce up and make them look all 
the one and the same. I took the time out to get the other areas looking nice. It would be kind of silly not to do that with my new areas. So, just spread these ferns around and kind of um, give it an effect by following around the rocks. We also need to get rid of that native foliage there. And let's see. Let me use these cooked pines. Uh, I put them there at the corners just to kind of hide the fact that that's where the fence turns. Uh, and I'll do that over here. You'll notice me a lot of times will put down trees like in the corners of the exhibits. I might have even said that before, but the reason is it's just kind of I want to try to hide the artificiality. So like I'm going to use like that set of trees to kind of block the area out. Um, what do I want to do here in this section? Is I'm going to again use trees to block it out, but still leave it good and nice for the wolves. I think. Um, so it'll be like they have a little area where they can both be outside, but uh, the humans aren't looking right at them. So that'll be nice. I'm liking that idea a lot. And just drag these around the edges. Uh, that fence is really good, but I'm still going to try to hide it. Um, just because I do want to give the sense that the forest here is sort of all enveloping. And I want to do that because that's what you told me to do in the comments. So I am nothing but a slave to people who comment in the videos below. So, no. Uh, you know what I'm going to do here? Uh, since I did take the time to leave that little gap in between, I'm actually going to let you see the fence there. And go right through, as you can see I'm doing, and just fill in the areas in between the shelter and the fence. I think that's going to give me the best of both worlds. It's going to look like it's manicured. It's going to get to show off that fence really nicely. And it still kind of disguises the more artificial building behind it. Or I guess I should say more artificial looking building. It's all artificial obviously, but it's you no know, matter of appearances. Give it a bird's eye view here. Now that's one of the really nice things about playing in sandbox mode is playing to uh, challenge mode. I mentioned earlier in the, some, not this video, but many, many videos ago, maybe way back in episode one, that I do prefer to play challenge mode, but um, the one thing that sucks about challenge mode is that it takes forever to get your displays to the point where you're happy with what they look like. Because you have to think, well, I'd really like these, you know, camels, which I put up front and they're cheap and nice to have this great looking display, but I can't afford to blow a thousand dollars on rocks right now. So, oop, and we fell inside the wolf exhibit. Let's go ahead and move and try that again. And just take a guest level. That's pretty good. Um, it's actually looking a little more open and exposed than I thought it would. Uh, I'm not sure I want more plants. Let's try messing with the geography a little bit. Uh, let's raise the sleeping platform. Like so. Uh, let's see if I can't... I probably can't. Yeah, if I try to smooth out that area, I can't keep the platform high, so... That's all right. Just hit spot things. I still think we're better with a slightly raised platform there. All right, and let's look at that now. Yeah, that's a little better. Just a little more character when you do things like that, particularly in very large exhibits like this is. You know, it'd be very unnatural to have that much flat area in the wild. Uh, you can get away with that a little more. Uh, in smaller exhibits because there's not like a big open vista that you see with your eyes and so it doesn't register in your head as being quite as wrong but if you're gonna make large exhibits they need to have some ups and downs in their topography and let me just drop a few of these in like I said it still looked a little open and sparse That's better, because it looks like there's just uh, one or two little areas where we're peeking through, and we might be able to catch a glimpse of the wolves. 
In fact, I'm even going to get rid of that plant there. Dig it even more open. Yeah, I'm liking that a lot. Okay, uh, so let's turn our attention into snazzing up our pathway here. And, oh boy, I'm already at the 35-minute mark, so... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep rolling until I complete this exhibit, but then I'm going to have a real quick wrap-up. So let me find the logs for the back here. Oh, nope, those are the uh, tall ones. I want the shorter ones. Were they this way, or were they the other way? See, I feel like they were at the end. Of course, I say I need to start hurrying up and wrapping up, and the first thing I do is spend time searching for a pathway railing. So, that's me, always the efficient one. There we go, that's the one we want. And just drag it across here. Put it for, to there for now, I'll probably change that. As uh, the plan is to wrap back around the white-tailed deer exhibit. But uh, for now, it's fine. And let me find the glass viewing areas to prompt our guests to stop here and take a peek in, see if they can spot some of our eastern timber wolves right there. And unfreeze, good, nothing's like magically going through the glass, that's awesome. Let's go ahead and drop in some of our things for our guests now, obviously, donation box. Um, All right, I'm not going to find it. If uh, it's hitting that hitbox for the stone over there, I'll just put one down here instead. And we'll go ahead and let's grab some more of these forest benches. I started putting these down with our white-tailed deer. I think they look really good in this exhibit, or this section of the zoo, I guess I should say. Something like that. And you know what? Since this is a larger area, let's drop down an educator platform and put in one of our educators. We haven't done that in a while. Um, that's something that I carry over from playing challenge mode so much. You get a lot more educational donations if you have a uh, if you have an uh, a educator within earshot of the exhibit. And it occurs to me while I was putting down those benches, I meant to change these to forest benches as well, so everything in this area would be fine. I think we put these down... I think it was the episode we did the Black Bears, which was... 10? Yeah, it must have been episode 10. Oh, perhaps that's why our foxes were not getting taken care of, because our zookeeper was way on the other side of the area, just sitting down. So, there we go. Fantastic. I'm glad I'm paying you. Speaking of things I forgot, last time I did indeed, after predicting I would forget to put the maintenance worker in, forget to put the maintenance worker in. So there we go. I did not forget twice in a row. I almost did. Um, fortunately, I put down some fences, which remembered me I was being stupid and not putting in things I said I should, and that reminded me of other things I had been stupid about and not put in despite the fact that I said I should. So take that, all of you who are waiting to deride me and say, haha, you still didn't have your maintenance worker in. Yeah, that about lines up. I might tweak that a little bit off camera. But let's go ahead also and drop our zookeeper for our wolves in. Zookeeper Hagegi? Haged? Zookeeper. Let's call him Tim. And he's got to be responsible for this area too, of course. Let me get rid of that. Uh, Yeah, I almost forgot to put in entrances to this area, because they are separate. Um, and there, I'll get rid of those buttercups, I think is what they were. Oh yeah, I'm going to definitely have to play with this area, because a lot of those uh, plants I don't have a name for are like, bleeding through the walls, so I'll be tweaking those off camera just to satisfy my aesthetic styles. And we're going to go ahead and put in the food. 
and the water for the wolves inside here. That's again just so the AI interacts the way I want it to and the wolves are constantly going in and out of our shelter here. Just kind of get it to play along and then make it just more realistic for me. And we'll go ahead and grab our wolves here and drop them in. Um, I grabbed arctic wolves, not timber wolves. Whoops. Well, let's sell you off, Mr. Arctic Wolf. And we'll grab me some timber wolves, like I planned. Although, truthfully, I think one is just a recolor of the other. Um, so let's put in, let's see, I guess three bitches and one hound? Yeah, I just, I don't want any infighting, so that should be good. Let's limit it to one hound. There's our pack of eastern timber wolves, and our educator, who hasn't quite figured out which way the podium stands yet. That's starting to move. And, yep, right now. Looks like most of them are heading inside, and one of them is heading to the river. So, okay. Fair enough. But it looks like Snow Leo's equipment is working, which it always does. I never doubt it. So, they can easily get in and out of that caged area. And I am really keeping you here long, so let's go ahead and zoom on out. And you can see that empty area, uh, we're going to go ahead and loop back around the white-tailed deer next time, put in some smaller exhibits. I haven't decided yet what I want to put in there, so if you have any idea how we should finish off our forest display, please don't hesitate to leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe. That's what I'm doing here that makes me happy. It keeps my smile from ear to ear and prompts me to keep doing these videos, which I'm having a lot of fun doing. Thank you so much for taking your time to see me muck around with the wolves display today and have a great day.